Cordyceps can actually decrease testosterone catabolism and testosterone stimulated prostate hypertrophy. What's up guys, my name is Lucas, the founder of Ergogenic Health and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So in today's video, what I'm gonna do is look at some of the amazing benefits associated with cordyceps mushroom. Now at the start of this video, I just said that cordyceps can decrease testosterone catabolism and testosterone stimulated prostate hypertrophy. Now. What I'm referring to here is this study that was titled Cordyceps Militaris Body Extract Decreases Testosterone Catabolism and Testosterone Stimulated Prostate Hypertrophy. Now, this study was done in 2020. And what the authors noted was that Cordyceps mushroom maintained the serum levels of testosterone and DHT, but inhibited testosterone induced prostate hypertrophy. Cordyceps also increase the secretion of testosterone and DHT by primary testicular cells with no change in the mRNA expression of steroidogenic enzymes, but decrease the growth of prostatic cell lines. Our data suggests that cordyceps could improve both later onset hypogonadism and benign prostatic hypertrophy in males. So cordyceps mushroom has been known to improve libido, sex drive and testosterone levels in men. And it's interesting to see that cordyceps can actually decrease testosterone catabolism and also reduce testosterone stimulated prostate hypertrophy. So what is cordyceps? Cordyceps is a genus of fungi that includes approximately 400 recorded species of parasitic fungi. It has been traditionally used as a medicine in places like Tibet and China. Now, cordyceps is a rare, naturally occurring entomopathogenic fungus, usually found at high altitudes on the Himalayan plateau and a well-known medicinal mushroom in traditional Chinese medicine. Now, cordyceps contains various bioactive components, out of which cordycepin, although there are many others, cordycepin is considered the most vital due to its utmost therapeutic as well as nutraceutical potential. This cordycepin is known for various nutraceutical and therapeutic potential such as anti-diabetic, anti-hyperlipidemia, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, immunomodulatory, antioxidant, anti-aging, anti-cancer, antiviral, hepatoprotective, hyposexuality, cardiovascular diseases, anti-malarial, anti-osteoporotic, anti-arthritic, and cosmeceutical, which makes it a the most versatile medicinal mushroom for helping to maintain good health. So you're probably wondering, you know, before we get into the video and we break down more of the benefits of cordyceps, if you want to purchase cordyceps, there will be a link in the video description down below for a very high quality cordyceps mushroom extract. So here's a broad spectrum effect of cordyceps militaris. And we can see that one of the active constituents that I just spoke about, cordycepin, is included. So cordycepin, cardiovascular protection, antimicrobial, anti-tumor, reducing high lipids in the blood and immunomodulation. Now, cordycepin is similar to adenosine, which I'll cover shortly. And the adenosine derivatives have anxiolytic activity, so reducing anxiety, immunomodulatory actions, and cardiovascular protection. The polysaccharides that are present in cordyceps have liver protective, antioxidant activity, anti-aging activity, antimicrobial activity, anti-tumor, and again, immunomodulatory effects. The ergosterol analogs have cardiovascular protective qualities, antimicrobial activity. Then if we keep going around, we can see mannitol, which is a powerful antioxidant. Some of the peptides present in cordyceps have antimicrobial, anti-tumor, and immunomodulatory activity. The fibrinolytic enzymes can have cardiovascular protective effects. And then all of the other constituents have been shown to possess kidney protective effects as well. So let's look at the very first major benefit of cordyceps mushroom. Now, number one is the anti-fatigue effect or the energy boost that many people can experience when they take cordyceps mushroom extract. Now, this study here was titled Effects of the Mycelial Extract of Cultured Cordyceps Sinensis on In Vivo Hepatic Energy Metabolism in the Mouse. 
Now, interestingly, what they looked at was the ratio between ATP and inorganic phosphate ratio. So basically looking at the energy status of the liver. Now from one to three weeks, there was a consistent increase in the ATP to inorganic phosphate ratio, which basically represents a high energy state. And this was only seen or well, was seen in those mouse that were treated or that consumed cordyceps extract. So. This sort of ties in with the athletic performance boost that many people experience when they use cordyceps. I personally have used cordyceps. There was a period of my life when I was taking cordyceps, I think for about three years straight when I was playing soccer. And I always noticed benefits in terms of my aerobic capacity and my general day-to-day -day energy. And also I noticed better breathing when I use cordyceps, which would make sense because in traditional Chinese medicine, they do deploy cordyceps as part part of a kidney protective formula and also to improve lung health and specifically even for asthma as well. This next study here, enhancement of ATP generation capacity, antioxidant activity and immunomodulatory activities by Chinese yang and yin tonifying herbs. So they looked at one of my other favorite herbs, Cystanch, they looked at reishi mushroom, I'm not a fan of, and cordyceps. I mean, they noted that these yin and yang tonifying herbs stimulated mitochondrial adenosine triphosphate, so ATP generation. And so as part of this effect, these tonic herbs are known to build the energy reserves in the body and generally speaking, build up vitality and help one to deal with stress. Now, how does cordyceps affect the microbiome? This study here looked at the the postbiotic potential or the postbiotic properties of cordyceps mushroom. So the study was titled Effect of Cordyceps Militaris on Formation of Short Chain Fatty Acids as Postbiotic Metabolites. Now, interestingly, according to the results of this present study, the tested lactobacillus species can utilize cordyceps militaris as carbon source and is able to form postbiotics in the media. So Cordyceps mushroom has been shown to increase the short chain fatty acid propionic acid and also affect the amount of lactobacillus in the gut. So again, we're looking at the postbiotic activity of cordyceps mushroom. This next study here is looking at how cordyceps can regulate blood sugar and or stabilize blood sugar. So this study was titled extracts of cordyceps militaris lower blood glucose via the stimulation of cholinergic activation and insulin secretion in normal rats. Again, we're looking at a, a rat study, whether or not it translates to humans is questionable. However, given its long use of improving longevity and vitality, it would not surprise me if this same blood sugar lowering effect also occurred in humans. So in normal rats, cordyceps decreased plasma glucose by 21% and induced additional insulin secretion by 54% after 30 minutes. So what they noted was that cordyceps can lower plasma glucose via the stimulation of insulin secretion and cholinergic activation involved in the hypoglycemic effect. So we can see that cordyceps can be useful for maintaining healthy blood sugar levels. So what effect does cordyceps have on the brain? This is probably the most interesting side to cordyceps in my opinion. So this study was titled Molecular Mechanisms of Cordycepin Emphasizing Its Potential Against Neuroinflammation. So what they noted was that cordycepin was a potent anti-inflammatory by down-regulating the adenosine A2 receptor, it inhibits microglial activation and subsequent inhibition of several neuroinflammatory markers such as NFK Kappa B, NLRP3, inflammasome, interleukin 1 beta, INOS, COX2, TNF alpha, and HMGB1. Cordycepin mitigates lipopolysaccharide mediated toll like receptor activation by activating adenosine receptor A1, thereby improving antioxidant enzymes. So, what we're noticing here is that cordycepin may possess a nootropic effect for those who suffer from neuroinflammation. And again, any degree of neuroinflammation is very likely to elicit brain fog, worsened mood, and just a diminished quality of life. This next study here was titled Improvement of Learning and Memory Induced by Cordyceps Polypeptide Treatment and the Underlying Mechanism. Now, what they noted was that genes specifically that were involved in the nervous system effects were PIK3R5 
II one beta and SLC 18A2. So basically the authors noted that cordyceps polypeptide may improve learning and memory in this scopolamine induced mouse model of learning and memory impairment by scavenging oxygen free radicals, preventing oxidative damage and protecting the nervous system. This next study here was titled 3-deoxyadenosine or cordycepin produces a rapid and robust antidepressant effect via enhancing prefrontal AMPA receptor signaling pathway. Now, really interesting here is the link between cordycepin and its similarities to ketamine. Now, ketamine's antidepressant properties rely on blocking NMDA receptors and increasing AMPA signaling and rapidly inducing synaptogenesis. Therefore, by acting as an enhancer of the AMPA receptor, cordycepin is considered relatively safe and beneficial for use as a potential novel antidepressant drug. In summary, in this paper, we have identified a rapid and relatively safe antidepressant for the treatment of depression mediated through enhancing prefrontal AMPA receptor synaptic plasticity. So basically what we're seeing here is that cordycepin shares a similar mechanism of action to ketamine to rapidly and robustly reduce depression by acting on the AMPA receptor signaling pathway, which is really incredible research. So cordyceps is also known to improve sleep. This study here was titled, Cordycepin increases non-rapid eye movement sleep via adenosine receptors in rats. Now, interestingly, cordycepin increased theta waves power density during non-REM sleep. In addition, the protein levels of the adenosine receptor subtypes A1, A2A, and A2B were increased after the administration of cordycepin, especially in the rat hypothalamus, which plays an important role in sleep regulation. Therefore, we suggest that cordycepin increases theta waves power density during non-REM sleep via non-specific adenosine receptors in rats. So again, many people actually notice that they get sleepy or fatigued about six to eight hours after dosing cordyceps. My opinion here is that it's affecting the adenosine receptors and this would actually make sense if you timed it about six to eight hours before bed. Let's see if you get a deeper sleep effect if you dose it around six to eight hours before bed. Cordyceps, how does it affect testosterone? Well, this study here was looking at the protective effect of cordyceps militaris extract against BPA induced reproductive damage. BPA is a xenoestrogen. And now what they noted here was that cordyceps not only obviously enhanced the levels of luteinizing hormone and testosterone, but it also improved the sperm count and motility compared to the BPA treated group. These results suggest that cordyceps could be used as a potential natural substance for preventing BPA induced reproductive damage. So as far as dosing, I did mention maybe considering using cordyceps in the afternoon to get an adenosine buildup effect to give you a deeper sleep at night. But as far as dosing, many people have used it in the mornings with their coffee to increase energy. And as far as the amount, we're looking at about a quarter to half a teaspoon per day. So about 500 milligrams to about a thousand milligrams per day. And you'll see the cordyceps that I recommend linked in the video description down below if you want to purchase cordyceps to improve your health and well-being and performance. But otherwise, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please be sure to check out all the amazing links in the video description down below. I do have a free testosterone optimization training if you're interested in boosting your testosterone as high as possible naturally. I do have a free training linked in the video description down below. So make sure you join that free training. Otherwise, thank you for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.